Continuity is out, and change seems like it may be on its way in for the Chicago Bulls. On today's episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about how that change can help set the Bulls on the right direction that they have avoided for the last few years. It's also Saturday, so that means it's mailbag day, as this episode is mainly built around your voicemails. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host here, Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today. And so the last couple of weeks have brought about a lot of change for the Chicago Bulls. A change in direction right now. The roster still primarily is mainly the same, right? We swapped Alice Caruso for Josh Giddy. You, you drafted Mattis Busillis, uh with the number 11th overall pick. And then you have players that seem like they're on their way out in Torrey Craig, Andre Drummond, maybe even DeMar DeRozan. We know the Bulls are still shopping Zach Levine, and we've heard that they're shopping uh, Nikola Vucevic as well. So it seems like the winds of change are coming through the United Center. Now, some Bulls fans are upset. Some are embracing the new direction. I just want to talk a little bit about that. You know, you have a segment of Bulls fans right now that have been complaining that the Bulls are, have gotten worse. And here's the thing that I present to you guys. If you've been complaining about the continuity, did you think that the change was only going to be linear to just make us better? I'm sorry, but realistically with where the Bulls were, having not a lot of leverage with their players, the, if the Bulls moved off of continuity, the highest probability was always for us to be worse, to take a step back, to take a longer term step forward via getting younger, betting on your young players, things like that. That is where this was always going to go if and when the Bulls moved on from continuity. So my Bulls fans that have been complaining uh, and, 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 and hurt over the fact that it seems like the Bulls were going to get worse, that's exactly what needed to happen here. That it was always going to eventually go on the fact that the Bulls had to take a step back to take a longer term step forward. I've been saying that on this show for probably about a year that eventually when it was going to happen. So my Bulls fans that are upset that it seems like the Bulls are getting worse, guess what? Yes, that's what's needed in a case like this. Part of the reason why the Bulls are in this place because they fought so hard to stay, uh, to keep continuity of something that just wasn't working. You got, you have to. Like, I get it as fans, we always hope that the progression is always going to be con con consistently moving forward, that we're just going to get better and better and better and better and better. And sometimes to get better, you have to clear the deck and you have to really reset the table. And maybe, you know, just maybe that the Bulls aren't going to be as bad long term as what. It, what it sometimes looks like they may, that comes down to how successful they are with the young players they build in. How quick do they develop? And that would leads to the next thing that I want to talk about. A lot of Bulls fans have been saying, are we wasting the next two years on Kobe White and Ayo DeSumo's deals by having this team that's going to get worse? And I get the, the, the why that question is there. Let me make no mistake about it. I completely understand why that question is there for Chicago Bulls because, yeah, theoretically, you could be. And I don't want to act like it's outside the realm of possibility that when Io DeSumo and Kobe White become unrestricted free agents, that maybe they look at this shit show that's been the Chicago Bulls and say, do we really want to attach what then is, is going to be our primes to a team that we just don't think is going to be able to put a contender uh, around us or build a contender? And so, yeah, there is absolutely that chance of being there. I don't want to, I'm never going to act like it's not a possibility that Io and Kobe look at this and say, this ain't where we want to be. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that that's a huge probability either. I'm not saying that that's a foregone conclusion, but it is fair for Bulls fans to ask that question of where, because of where this team is, could this end up being somewhere that they just don't want to be? Could we be wasting those years? Could we be wasting the years of having these guys on really reasonable contracts? And then by the time we put something together, they get big extensions. Now, here's the thing that I'll say is that because of their contracts being reasonable now, you could get a 150%, or what is it, 140% increases. Even if they were to get maxes, it's still not going to be like some of the $60 million and things that you're seeing there. So I'm not too worried about it in that aspect. And I would say this, if the Bulls play in a way to where they're looking at, we got to extend, uh, uh, we got to extend Io, we got to extend Kobe White at the end of these contracts, I think that means the Bulls are in a good place, right? And so going younger for the Bulls has always been the best option because you, but you have to develop. And that is also where some of this sits right now as being some disappointment and fear from Bulls fans because 
We haven't always done the best job at developing. So that is a dangerous ask for Bulls fans to have faith in because we just haven't seen the success come from the front office that we want to see before we fully go into all development mode. But I'll say this, and I went over the ages last uh, on yesterday's episode and things like this. This is a Bulls team that is set to reset and go younger and hopefully be, be solid in that, right? Yes, we know the 2025 draft. We got a voicemail. I'll get into that. But when you look at the players here, you got to ask yourself, everybody still has question marks. Kobe White, can he, can he do it again? And can he even grow from what he did last season? Same thing with Ayo DeSumo. They both showed great flashes or great consistency last year and what they were able to do in different stretches. But there is that question of when you see them do it one time, can they do it again? That question is always going to be there. Josh Giddy, can he get back to being more that 16, 7, and 7 player? Or are we going to see more of what he was in the playoffs? There's that question there as well. Patrick Williams, we know the question marks around Patrick Williams and who and what he can be. He's shown so many flashes of him being able to be a good player, but they have just been that, just flashes. It hasn't been consistent enough for you to feel reliable in that. We have no, no center depth for real unless Adama Sinogo is ready to go. Let's hope that that's going to be the case. And then you got Julian Phillips, Dalen Terry, who haven't really gotten big opportunities yet. But then you got to ask yourself as well, have they shown enough to earn those opportunities? So those play a part into it as well. And then you got the new rookie and Mattis Buzillis. And Mattis Buzillis, while I am very, very high on this prospect, I was ecstatic the fact that he fell to the Bulls. A lot of people have been echoing that same thing. They did not feel like he would even fall to 11. The fact that he's there, I don't even care that he's from the Chicago area. The, that's the skill set that he has, right? Is it a super le- superstar skill set? No. I mean, well, level that you, caliber that you expect, probably not. Like I said, Franz Wagner is what you're looking at. We got a voicemail that goes into some other comps. But Franz Wagner is what you're looking at. But here's what I'll say. You got to ask yourself, the question with what Busillis is, is how much of his offense is still going to be reliable if that three-point shot does not come around? And a lot of Bulls fans have been going at the three-point shot, and this is what I'm going to tell you guys. A lot of times, three-point shooters, he was a great three-point shooter in high school. They go from high school to college, right? And at that point, yes, the, the floor, college floor is a little bit more spaced out. The three-point line is, is a little bit further back. It's still not as far as the NBA game, but you have that transition year. Buzillis went from high school to playing with against grown men in the G League and went from the, the, the high school three-point line to the NBA three-point line. And that does make a difference. How much he adapts to that three-point shot and that ends up becoming an actual tool in his arsenal, that is going to be a big determining factor on how successful he may be or how versatile. I won't say successful. We've seen players absolutely be, be successful without having a consistent three-point shot, but how versatile he can be at the NBA level, if that three-point shot does not develop. You look at the mechanics of it, you look at the release of it, everything there looks good, the fundamentals look good. You just got to get with Peter Patton. How much is he going to be able to be that consistent shooter getting with Peter Patton? We've seen Io develop that. Uh, Julian Phillips have already talked about how, how Peter Patton has helped him kind of get back to the shot that he had before, but it's still a question mark there. And so the Bulls are moving into an uncertain territory, and that is always going to be a little concerning for Bulls fans, especially fans that have been, people who have been fans of this franchise for as long as they've been, and that the Bulls have been a struggle. Like, there's no, I would never say that the Bulls have not given hundreds of reasons for pessimism. You also got to ask yourself, is AK going to be able to see this vision through? And I've seen people say things like, well, AK hasn't shown an ability to have vision. I got to fight against that. Building it with Vooch, DeMar, Lonzo, and Zach, and it working, did show that that initial vision worked to a degree. The, the sucky part is, is that between injuries and the subsequent moves needed to support that didn't come through. So you got to see that aspect of it. And this is what the team, the front office initially said they wanted to do was build organically through the draft over time. They tried to jumpstart it. It didn't work. And now this could be more of a course correction getting back to what they initially said that they were going to do. That's the hope here for the Chicago Bulls. Am I saying that it's this perfect thing? that we all just need to have absolute faith in it and it's just going to work? No, I'm not saying that at all. And I'd be crazy to say that. And this thing, and, and it's I, I haven't labeled it a full reboot. This is a major retooling and going younger. Um, and I think that that's probably the best bet for this. And the Bulls at least seem like they finally have w- woken up. And that's the thing that to take away from this is that this front office has been so in the weeds so much in the last few years where they had just constantly talked about continuity and it seems like they finally woke up that in the season press conference where AK said he realized that this ain't the group there's there's things wrong with this group and we doubted it 
A lot of Bulls fans doubted if he was really going to come out of that and make some changes, and it seems like we're going down that path. We got, we still got left, tons of things left up. And as, you know, tomorrow is the official opening of free agent as of 5 p.m., let's see what else comes. But the changes have started, and we got to see if the changes are going to get us to the place that we're going to want to go to. And we got some big decisions to make soon, right? At the end of, ne- at the end of next season, we got to decide on what the Josh Giddey extension is going to look like. That's after having to decide right now what's going on with the Patrick Williams extension, right? So tons of questions, tons of things still left up in the air for the Chicago Bulls. But let's see what the rest of this free agency brings. And so I get it. Everybody's talking. like, And a lot of Bulls fans are still holding out hope that we're going to make this move and this move to keep us, like, at this point, embrace the youth movement, both the front office and the, and the fans, because I know it's going to be tough to watch a team win 25 to 30 games. But that may set us with a better platform to actually grow something sustainable. We try to go for the quick turnaround. This thing ain't going to be quick. At least it doesn't shape up to be unless somebody, let's say, Buzillis hits a, 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 a trajectory that we don't see or Kobe White takes it up another level. But that's if it happens via the young guys, that's still more sustainable. But let me know what you guys think of all that down below. But enough of me just yapping. Um, by the way, I didn't have that first segment planned at all. I kind of just talked through it. So it is what it is. Uh, let's get into the voicemail bag for today. This first voicemail, this one's from Vaughn. What's good, Hayes? This is Vaughn. So I had a question for you about potential center options. But before we get into that, man, I just want to congratulate you, man, on doing your thing. I see you stepping up. I think I saw you on Stadium. Uh, you had reposted. That's pretty dope. It's always good to see, you know, see yourself just – elevate and and get to new things uh just wanted to let you know how much i, I appreciate you and your content how, how you help young creators like myself uh you know the guys over at who's legion how, you know just everything that you do whether it's advice or anything like that so just keep being you keep pushing uh it's really amazing to see uh but the question that i have for you basically was since we didn't draft a center and we got matas buzelis which i'm totally fine with a pick like that um the options seem pretty limited in terms of uh a center that we can get to replace Vooch or even back him up at this point um so I'm not really focused too much on the replacement of Vooch. I guess uh, potential options. I'm wondering if it were to replace Vooch, would you be cool with a Clint Capella? Would you be cool with maybe just moving, d- dumping Vooch in a salary dump and then re-signing Drummond? Um, and then far, as far as backups, um, would you be cool with taking a flyer on someone like James Wiseman? Um, you know, former second pick. Uh, he's still only 23. Maybe the coaching staff development staff in chicago can get something out of him um but what do you think about all those potential names those potential options uh there's probably more unrealistic ones like a deandre ayton or mitchell robinson or uh, um the the backup the backup to deandre ayton too i forget his name uh, uh williams but what options do you think would be the best that you would like to see me personally i think i would like vucevic staying at this point if the other two are gone of course like uh demar and zach or uh, my favorite would probably be dumping Vuce, re-signing drummond and then signing someone with potential like james wiseman but i want to talk about uh two things first thing i want to talk about one of the backdoor reasons why i think that Bulls might have traded Alex Caruso first. I feel like every GM was probably like, hey, sprinkle, sprinkle a little Alex Caruso on to a Zach Levine trade. Sprinkle a little Alex Caruso on to a Nikola Vucevic trade. And AK was probably like, bruh, I don't got it. I'm not giving you Alex Caruso. Like, stop asking me about it. Every single trade that y'all call me with is asking for him. And he was probably just trying to get the value he wanted for Alex Caruso. Stop having to worry about every team calling him asking him for Alex Russo because they know he had it. So he probably just got hit rid of him, you know, and now they can really have real conversations about teams that call and want that to be or want Russo to be and they're just not asking for him and just ask Russo. But that's just my, that's my, you know, looking into it too much. Maybe I'm just sick. But anyway, my second thing I want to talk about is the potential trade I had put in with Discord uh, that you had came across. It's uh, Lonzo Ball and Portland State back to Portland for Robert Williams and two seconds. My knowledge is that the Portland pick uh, prevents the Trailblazers from trading a lot of their future picks, and then that this Portland pick would uh, transfer into two second-round picks if it doesn't become a first-round pick in so many years. We're converted now. We're converted now. Y'all can have y'all picks back. 
we can swap two injured players. They can get off the contract of Robert Williams a year earlier. And then both these teams can hopefully, you know, make the most of the injured player or in the Trailblazers' safe, maybe they can waive them and free up some money or whatever they want to do. But the biggest thing for them is they get their pick back. We get our second. We get a center that can be a stopgap for now. And then uh, that'll give us some more time to find our center in the future. But let me know what you think. Uh, that's all I got to say. All right, peace. First of all, my stadium appearance, um, it was great. And I, and I appreciate it. And I've always said this. Um, it's because of you guys. I do a terrible job at promoting this podcast. Any type of notice from bigger brands that Chicago Bulls Central gets is because of you guys, the, the Bulls fans, the supporters of the show that help um, push this thing up and push these things forward and make this a movement that you can't really ignore. And so I appreciate you guys so much for all the support, um, being on stadium, on the shame, same show as Shams, even though they made it seem like I was going to get to talk to Shams. I didn't, uh, but it was, it was really good. It was really fun. Now, as far as the options, Clint Capella, James Wiseman, listen, I like Clint Capella in the sense of you get a one-year veteran who's on an expiring deal who can come in and start for you, especially if you do move on from like a, um, you move on from Vooch, right? Uh, but at the same time, there's still a lot of questions, a lot of questions around how, 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 what Clint Capella could be and how we would even get that and make that maneuver happen. But I wouldn't hate on it. Now, as far as taking a flyer on James Wiseman, yes, he's still only 23 years old. And I get it that a lot of people kind of look at James Wiseman as being this guy who didn't get a bunch of opportunity, and I initially was like, wait, he did. And then you realize he only started 55 games over his career. He's only averaged 19 minutes over the course of his NBA career. Now, I'll say this. I don't, I wouldn't, I don't care for it, like, but if it was a, hey, we're going younger anyway, let's sign James Wiseman, let's see if he can earn a role, maybe a non-guaranteed deal, something like that, maybe in a case like that, but it's not necessarily something I'm, I'm necessarily looking forward to at all. Phil Capella's cool. Um, but then you get you in your second in your callback, and like you said, we saw this on Discord. You presented a deal that I actually love: sending Lonzo Ball and the Portland pick to back to Portland to get Robert Williams the third. And while this still has tons of questions, especially of health and things like that, there's a couple of reasons why I love this deal. One, Portland, not even them making the playoffs. I don't think they're worried about them being able to hold their pick because they're not making the playoffs. But what trading the Chicago Bulls, the, trading that pick to the Bulls and putting the protections on it that, that they've done basically has meant that Portland cannot trade their own pick, not because of the Stephanie rule. Well, it is in part because of the Stephanie rule, but because there are protections on that pick. for the, the Bulls could have that pick every year for the next four years. So you can't trade that first-round pick that the Portland Trailblazers can. So it adds them more flexibility in that case. Let's say that there's a situation in 2025, right, in that draft where they want to move up in the move up because they see their guy, they want to package their 2026 pick to move and their 2025 pick to move up in that draft. They can't do that because of the protections that the Bulls have on it. So that that could incentivize Portland to do that trade. As well as they just got Klingon in there. They still got Aiton in there. They may look to move Aiton. But Robert Williams III, 26 years old, not on a terrible contract. The contract for Robert Williams III, I had to go and look at it. It's only $12 million. It expires at the end of the 2025-26 season, and he is the type of center that can fit in with what it seems like this Bulls team needs and wants. He can block shots. He can rim protect. He can get some rebounds. Not a great score, but he can get out in transition. I would not hate this deal at all for the Chicago Bulls. Now, I'm not saying that this is a perfect deal. I'm not saying that this is a deal that really ups the ceiling for the Bulls, but in getting somebody, you're trading a, 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 off, a, a somebody who's been constantly injured with Lonzo and you're and you're getting back a player that's been injured too but kind of fits a more bigger position of need right now on top of getting the two second round picks also in this trade because the Portland pick is more likely to be to convert to two second round picks so you're still getting what you're ultimately probably going to get anyway out of out of that I feel like this is a really good deal that could incentivize both teams I'm not saying it's going to happen this is one of my favorite deals that you or anybody has ever presented I think this is a well thought out deal. Don't know if it's going to happen. This is a great, very good deal. All right, let's get into the next voicemail. This one is from Marvin. What's going on, Hayes? Yeah, this is me, man. It's Marvin. I heard what you've been saying about me, man. I just want to come in for a second and address you and the fans. First of all, I'm still listening, guys. I just don't chime in as much because I want to hear somebody else's opinion. But I got, got a couple of things to say first. Try to get them all through. First of all, the comments that I've been hearing 
sometimes they upset me, sometimes I understand them. So I want to address them. I don't know if we all can remember or if we have forgotten about how the Bulls played before Alonzo Ball got hurt. Now, they have, everybody's bashing DeMar, Zach, and, you know, obviously, Booch. Do you guys remember the Bulls were pretty damn good when we had those three playing, all those four playing together? I'm not saying that's going to happen again, but you have to remember they did play well together. Also, the Caruso trade. Are we so upset that the Bulls bring in a young point guard and everybody's saying they could have took the pick. Who's to say a point guard coming out of this college is going to be anything? Don't nobody know about young young guys coming out of college. You get somebody that's already been in the NBA and get it. And a security blanket just in case Alonzo Ball does not. There's nothing wrong with that. And last but not least, we all have to stop thinking that this ownership and this organization is going to do what we want them to do. Guys. Come on, guys. We are so spoiled about when the Bulls had Michael Jordan and we're so anxious to win another championship. We just want it all right now. I'm not saying the Bulls are doing well, but I'm not here to say if this call is going to change what the Bulls do because I know it's not, and everybody else needs to understand that. So I want to say this in close. Stick to what you see. Believe in what they're doing. If you want to stay with the team, do If you don't, go to another team. Not to say you're going to be happy over there, but I'm going to say this. If the Bulls end up winning and all the bashing that's going on, everybody's going to be there for them. If they're losing, they're going to leave. Hobo bubble. It doesn't make a difference. But to you, hey, man, listen, I listen to you guys all the time. I haven't forgot you. I'm just in the background. I chime in periodically. I'm going to start back chiming in more because today is draft day. Who they get, I don't know, guys. Don't nobody know who they're going to get. Are we going to be happy? We don't even know that. All I'm going to say is this. Let's see if this thing comes together. Let's see how what goes on, see how they built at the beginning of the season, have our judgments in. But for right now, they're Bulls fans, guys. Be happy with your team because you're very sure. There's other fans around the league that are much more accept, I mean, excited and crazy about their team like we are. So I'm going to say again, all the comments are bashing. They're well worth it. But don't forget, the Bulls once were a decent squad with, with some of the guys that you guys don't like no more. And, hey, Arvin, man, you know I'm always listening. I'll be getting back. Take care. Listen, yes, the Bulls played better with Zoe. And I think we all know that. But I also think, not you, Marvin, because you're a very realistic person. By the way, missed your brother. Glad to have you back. Um, is that that we romanticized that time period. That Bulls team was building a lot of bad teams, not winning against a lot of the good teams. And they still had some serious flaws that at that time, if you guys go back and listen around that time, I was telling people, oh, the Bulls aren't going to stay number one. If they keep playing like this, they're going to drop probably the fourth, fifth. They're going to drop. But I still was it still was a great thing to kind of build off on that. It looked like we were going to have a nice team that we can add to over the next couple of off seasons. Unfortunately, injury, a game against the uh, Golden State Warriors in which two knee injuries to Zach Levine and Lonzo Ball. And that team was ne never was the same. That's unfortunately where it happened. Now, as far as your thoughts on the Giddy trade, I completely agree with you. Josh Giddy is a is a very solid player and a player with a lot of upside. The people who've been saying Josh Giddy's trash and things like that, I just I'm never going to buy into that narrative. I get it how the playoffs ended for him, and we've seen a lot of 21 year old players suck in the playoffs. So that doesn't mean that 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 you can write off the rest of their career because of it. We just got to see how it's going to go. And I love how you ended this, saying that stop thinking the Bulls will do what we want them to do. That is like. That is, that is every fan base, and we got to stop that. The Bulls aren't going to do just what we want them to do. And that doesn't mean that they are making the wrong decisions because they're not doing what we want to do. And that doesn't mean they're making the right decision either, but you got to see what the ultimate vision is going to be. And that, that they, like I said before, this is the last opportunity that they get. Whatever they forge this offseason, I'm going to give them the opportunity, not that my opportunity matters, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see it through, and I want to see what they ultimately do with this. And it's not all going to be told in one year. I get it as Bulls fans. We want to see it all happen now. It's not going to. It's not realistic, and it ain't happening all now. But let's see where we can get to, and hopefully we get to a much better place when it's all said and done, Marvin. Uh, but thank you for leaving that voicemail. Let's go ahead and get into this next one. This one's from the 619. I'm sorry, 619. That ain't Ray Mysterio, the 609. Yo, what's the deal, hey? This 609 sequence. I got to say, man, I, I I must have come a long way in my Bulls fandom, bro, because where I feel like I would have typically been outraged that these motherfuckers managed to not get a pick back. Honestly, I'm I'm just happy they managed to get some value for Caruso because I, I really feel like as long as we are able to retain a quality Josh Giddy, we, we won. We won. 
it, it, and then it really even ain't about winning, winning or losing as long as we're able to retain some that some value going forward long term. You know what I'm saying? Not something that's gonna be a flash in the pan and they're trying to get the hell out of here, or they in the pan but they never flash. You know what I'm saying? Like Gideon, he not he not terrible, bro. He's a good player. He's young. He got a lot of time to really turn into like a star. You know what I mean? Like, and it could be something great. And we got that for Alex Caruso. We appreciate Caruso. We we love everything he did. You know what I'm saying? And we glad he would be somewhere where he he's able to compete for a championship. But shit, at the end of the day, we needed something back too. And we fucking got it. I'm gonna just call this one right here a W because of all of the fucking L's we've been taking, bro. But anyway. Keep doing what you're doing, bro. We need you, man. We gonna see what we gonna do on this draft, man. Hopefully, I want a big. I, don't, I, ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna lie. I want a big. We need size. Bye, bro. Have a good one. Uh, retaining Josh Giddy, I think that it, that is gonna be a big thing for the Bulls this offseason. But I think he has to show and prove. Like how and uh, like I said, if he gets back to being that seventeen seven and seven or seventeen six and six player, it's gonna be a big extension for him. And at that point, he'd earn it. Now, the question that you have to ask yourself then is, how do the Bulls continually Keep flexibility while adding. And the only thing that really points to that is going younger, building through the draft, things like that. So we'll see what happens with it. I do think that, uh, you know, getting adding some size to the team definitely can help. But in getting Giddy and getting Mattis Busillis, this Bulls team has set themselves up with some nice, promising young talent. And we just got to see how they're going to cultivate it, how they're going to grow it, how they're going to develop it. And let's hope that that's the thing that we look at on the other side of that. And we're in a much better place than what we are right now. At least let's hope that. All right, let's get into the next voicemail. This one's for Maddie Legend. Yo, what up, hey? This is Maddie Legend. Let's go, Bulls. Just uh, finished watching Bulls pick, and I had a thought. So uh, I believe AK has finally realized what Billy Donovan needs in order to put a team on the floor. Billy Donovan does not like players who have never had per level professional experience. And the move to go get a 21 year old been playing for three years, and Josh Getty. And then another move to draft a player who's been playing the G League Ignite. I think AK is seeing and listening, finally, Billy Donovan and giving him what he needs to put team on the floor. Because Billy Donovan doesn't want to rebuild. He wants veterans who he can put on the floor right away, and they know what they need to do. Uh, hope that we're moving in the right direction now, man. Go Bulls. Listen, I don't think that uh, that the Bulls. Uh, you said that the Bulls are trying to build what Billy Donovan wants, and they don't want to rebuild. I actually think that that's the exact opposite of what they're doing. I think that they are going on a pseudo rebuild. Now they are still getting talent that can contribute now, and that Billy Donovan can coach up. But uh, a rebuild, in a sense, like oh, a rebuild over time, meaning that it's not this whole thing right now all at once. But over time, this is the direction we're going, and we're not going to be this team that is still necessarily competing. Um, for uh, to try to make it to the first round of the playoffs or anything like that. So I don't think that that would be the right decision either. Much like I say that, that the Bulls fans can't do just what, what Bulls fans want, they can't just do what Billy Donovan wants either. They have to put themselves in the best position both short-term and long-term. And it seems like that's the route that they're going. So I get what you're getting at. They are adding talent that Billy Donovan likes, but I don't think that they're going, doing this all of a sudden now that they're building this perfect team for Billy Donovan to go on playoff runs with. I don't think that that's the case either, Maddie. But, you know, overall, maybe I'm, I'm not taking exactly what you meant from it, but that's kind of my thought process in response to your voicemail. All right, let's get into this next voicemail. This one's from Todd. Hey, what's up, brother? This is Todd. Um, give me your shout after the, uh, the draft last night, man. I got to say, I am extremely, extremely happy with what uh, we ended up with, with uh, Bucellas. Um, I think that it's a great pickup. I just think that he's a culture setter. Uh, in the sense that this dude is essentially, I think he's got the upside of, they've been saying Franz Wagner, but I think that this kid could be more than that, actually. I think that he has a lot of skill set that reminds me of a young Tatum, actually, uh, in a lot of ways, or even a young, young Dirk. And those are the types of comparisons that I think his feeling can get to. But more importantly, he's got the heart, the will, the desire, and really just the the, the personal chip on his shoulder, like a Pat Bev or like a Joe Keem or something like that. So he's got that like drive as well that I think we need. And I think that couple with Giddy is going to change the culture of this, uh, of this organization. But more importantly, I'm excited about how this sets us up for next year. As you know, I talk about 2025 and I'm already deep, deep into that draft. So obviously Cooper Flag and Ace Bailey. 
But I'm really excited about it. now that we did not take a center in this draft, and it looks like Nick Claxton just signed a new new contract and things like that. I'm I'm not sure if we're gonna look for another center in free agency or move Booch. But even if we don't, and we say keep our draft pick for next year, I really want y'all to look at Common um, Maluash. Common Maluash. Uh, he's gonna be playing for Duke. And this kid, 7-2, is just amazing. Again, let, next year's draft is stacked. And I know everybody wants to, you know, tank for Cooper and potentially Ace Bailey, but I think we're going to need a big as Vooch is running out. And I think that is the kid that we need to be targeting. That's the reason that we need to keep our pick for next year. Common Malawash, if you put him next to our 6-9, uh, I'm sorry, 6-8 point guard in Giddy, 6-5, um, off guard in, in, in Kobe. Now you got Modest with a year under his belt at 6'9, 6'10. And then you also got Pat. Hopefully, I think we should keep him. Um, and then you put a 7'2 rim running with a little bit of upside in terms of, uh, facing basket jumper. Man, listen, we are going to be, give us four or five years and we'll be at the top of the fucking eight. So that's what I'm seeing right now. There is hope, brother. There is hope, y'all. And we finally got a little bit of it. I don't know if this was the plan or not, but AK, keep keep cooking because right now it's a good direction. That's all I got. Mattis Busilla's ceiling, like I said in kind of the opening segment, his ceiling really comes down to how much does his three-point shot round out at the NBA level? Because if it does, then he becomes this three-level scorer because he can score the mid-range, he has floaters, he can get to the rim, he's athletic, he can finish in transition. Uh, the the three-point shot and his passing. How much those two things develop for him, I think are going to determine just how high that ceiling is. The chip on the shoulder, completely agree with that. Completely agree with all of that. Busillis has the mindset. And I said this after we drafted him. He has the type of personality, the type of drive that you expect him to maximize on whatever his potential is. And that is a that's what makes the the pick for uh Busillis so promising outside of it just being that he's somebody that fell at number eleven that most people didn't think were going to fall at 11. So this is all really good things for the Bulls, and I agree with you that next year is huge, and it's not just about Cooper Flag and Ace Bailey. I would love to get either one of those guys, but it's about that being the deepest draft in maybe the next five years, and that is the time where you can get a, a, a talent that can really change the direction and trajectory of this franchise if they hit on it. But let's hope that they can as well, Todd. And it does seem like a, a lot of these moves may be with the 2025 pick being in mind. But let's see if that's going to be the reality, Todd. Thank you for the voicemail. Let's end this last voicemail from Corn. Let's go ahead and get into that now. Hey, what's the word, King? It's Corn. Let's get right into it. All right. All right. Now, I left a little comment um, that got a little, you know what I'm saying? You know, people, you know what I'm saying, a, a little debate about it. And let me just say this, and even you uh, uh, chime in, saying I live in the alternative universe. Sometimes, sometimes I do, you know. I, I do smoke a lot of weed. I don't drink alcohol, uh, but I just started my three-day fast. I fast three days at the end of every month, so I just started my three-day fast. So give me about uh, 50 to 60 more hours, I might be in the alternative universe then. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, uh, let's talk about what – I left on a comment, um, Adama Sanogu. Um, to give him a shot. I'm not talking about starting, but let's give him a shot at that too. But let's give him a shot. Um, us Bulls fans, we know the measurement. Um, he's six foot nine, um, seven, two and a half, almost wing, almost a seven three wingspan. Um, we, we got a center in Nikola Jokovic that's seven foot ten with a seven five wingspan. So, um, not that much difference in size. So, you know, I get the part of saying uh, he's not really a true center by size. I get it. I understand that. But he is 245 pounds. And another thing I love about the kid is his rebounding. His rebounding is almost elite level, especially in what he was doing in the G League. He had a very good season, almost great season. I'm going to say great. To me, he had a great season in the G League. You said it's that I ain't got to repeat it. But let's just say the 12 uh, rebounds, six of a half, or almost six of those rebounds is offensive rebounds. That's the stat that I looked at, and that's the stat that I love. And I think that's what he can really bring in is his rebounding, especially his offensive 
rebounding and bringing in a second chance point. Um, and that's pretty much it, man. And, and, and with that, man, um, let's give this kid a shot. I'm not saying he's going to be the second coming of Draymond Green, you know, small ball, any of that. I'm just saying let's give this kid a shot at the rotation. If he ends up being the starter, fuck, who gives a fuck? Who cares? That's good. That means he works for it and he earns it. But let's not just shoot him down and just say, okay, this kid is just this and that. We got to we got to do better, Chicago Bulls, Bulls, come on, Bulls fans, come on, we got to do better, we got to do better. <laughs> I love y'all. Peace, be red nation, blessings. The corniverse, the corniverse, corniverse, because you're corny. Nah, that's my brother, corn. Um, but the problem is, is that in your comment you said Snowgo as the starter. I agree with everything that you said, not the starter. The only reason I said you live in an alternate reality is because you said you want to see him as a starter. If if you're saying that he deserves a shot, yes. He showed everything that he could possibly show at the G League level. Everything. And that's just not hyperbole. Like, it doesn't seem like he can he can learn anything else from the G League. I'm sorry. Like, at some point, and that's what you want, right? The G League is supposed to be a development system. And as somebody develops and they show you some things, you should say, all right, bet. Now let's see if he sinks or swims at the, at the NBA level. 20 points per game, 12 rebounds per game, over a block per game, almost a steal per game, shoot the ball over 50% from the field, 61% from the field, actually, and 73% from free throw shooter as a center, solid but not great. Adama Sonogo, at 22 years old, has shown you everything that the G League competition level, he's above that. So what do you do? Give him a shot. Give him minutes at the NBA level. I'm down for him being a backup. I'm down for him, you know, getting maybe 10 or 12 minutes to start off with, see how he does and adjust. I know a lot of people are saying, well, the game he got in, he got 20 rebounds. Yeah, most of that was garbage time, but Adama Sonogo has shown that the G League, he's above that level of competition. Now it's time to see what he can bring at the NBA level. And I do, do hope and I do agree with you that he gets that shot because he had a great G League season. And now let's see what he can bring at the NBA level. And, you know, even the fact that he has up, up, upside of a three-point shooter, I'm not worried about that. It's a very slow shot. But just his strengths, right? If you just look at what he was strongest at in the G League, rebounding, blocking shots, finishing at the rim. Those are all things that we need. Let's go out and see. And like you said, those offensive rebounding numbers, great. Those get you second chance opportunities. Let's hope that that's the case. I'd love to see Adama Sonogo get that opportunity. Let's hope that it's in the cards. But guys, thank you so much for sticking through this episode with me. Make sure you guys are following the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. BullCentralPod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. Nine, nine. We're the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See red if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, break, media. media.